Good evening friends. Today we will be dealing with lymphedema. So what is a lymphedema? Lymphedema means is basically a disorder where there is a defective transport of lymph leading to a swelling of the uh, in upper limb or lower limb or the trunk or genitalia anywhere. So what is the function of a lymph? The lymphatics are basically present to uh, prevent the extracellular accumulation and the extravascular accumulation of fluids and proteins. Whenever the fluid gets accumulated in the extravascular compartment, the lymphatics drain them back into the veins. That is their basic function. So, what happens in a lymphedema? So, before that, we will see what is a lymphatic anatomy. Uh, the lymphatic anatomy, just like vascular anatomy, has got a lymphatic capillaries. This lymphatic capillary is a single uh, has a single layer of endothelial cells. It is a blind tube. It has got a no basal membrane or a widely fenestrated basal membrane. This capillaries will absorb all the uh, interstitial fluids and proteins because of their white endothelial gap junctions. They absorb these uh, fluids and they open into a micro, uh, micro lymphatic uh, pre character vessels. These pre character vessels have got endothelial cells uh, and few smooth muscle cells. Uh. These pre character vessels open into the lymphatic collecting vessels. This collector vessels is the, uh, is the first proper vessel. It has got a layer of endothelium, it has got smooth muscle layers, it has got uh, uh, valves, uh, valves are present in this layer, bilifred valves can be present. Uh, this are opens, this uh, collector vessels open into large lymphatic channels. Uh, this large lymphatic channel, just like veins, in the, they, in the lower limb, they are uh, communicated between the superficial and deep, venous, deep lymphatic system, uh, at the popular area and the inguinal area, uh, they open into the thoracic duct. The thoracic duct ascends in the abdomen, enters into the thorax, opens into the left subclavian so plus cells. Um, so this is the uh, basic lymphatic anatomy. So what are the causes of lymphedema? Uh, so what has to happen is this lymphatic either uh, there should be a congenital absence of the lymphatic vessels uh, of the uh, or there should be an evidence of any obstruction to the lymphatic vessels. Uh, this absence of the lymphatic vessels or mal development or absence of lymph node, this is called as the primary uh, lymphedema. The second lymphedema is usually because of an obstruction, because of multiple reasons. So, what are the three clinical types, subtypes of primary lymphedema? Uh, the primary lymphedema basically is more common in females, usually present in an younger age group less than 20 years. If it's uh, present at birth, it is called as congenital lymphedema. It is present in the uh, pubertal age group, it is called as lymphedema precox. If it is present above 35 years of age, it is called as lymphedema tala. Uh, this um, can, primary lymphedema can be associated with the wide varieties of genetic syndromes, namely Down syndrome, Petraea, Petau syndrome, Edward syndrome, Noonan syndrome, and uh, all uh, lymphangium hematosis. Uh, these are all genetic syndromes with intestinal lymphangiectasias. Yes, have got the primary uh, lymphedema. Two classical syndromes were called the Meig syndrome uh, and uh, uh, it's usually an Milroy's disease. The Milroy's disease they usually present as either the congenital lymphedema or as a lymphedema precox in their pubertal age group. Uh, there, are, uh, there are plenty of other mutations which can cause uh, primary lymphedema. The second lymphedema is one which is uh, commonly seen it can be because of usually because of an infection, namely uh, um, elephantiasis, the result of uh, filariasis. That is the most common cause worldwide for this uh, lymphedema. The other cause can be recurrent lymph angiitis because of bacterial infection, namely Streptococcus or Cephalococcus. It can be because of lymphogranuloma venerum. It can be because of uh, tuberculosis. These are the basic infections. It can be also be because secondary to tumors like uh, prostate tumors, lymphomas. Uh, and leukemia as it say lymphomas predominantly they can also cause the uh, uh, lymph lymphedema the other causes of lymphedema can be because of any uh, post their hydrogenic post any uh, lymph node surgeries uh, or uh, post axillary radiation for breast surgeries uh, they can also produce a lymphedema of the upper lip so these are the causes for the lymphedema so how do this lymphedema presents Initially, the patient will be asymptomatic, there will be no pain. Gradually, the patient first will develop swelling of the limb. Initially, the swelling will be pitting period edema and the swelling will disappear with raising the upper limb, raising the lower limb. Gradually, uh, the fluid once uh, it goes beyond the level, 
uh, the fluids and proteins gets accumulated in the industry in the extravascular spaces uh, in the skin and subcutaneous tissue. Uh, there will be an inflammatory uh, inflammatory infiltration, and there will be infiltration by fibroblasts and adipocytes. There will be deposition of collagen and uh, adipose adipose tissue in the skin and subcutaneous tissue, uh, leading to a chronic thickening of the uh, lower limb. This will be associated with a lot of skin changes like acanthosis or warty outgrowths of skin, uh, there will be skin fissures. Uh, this will have some cosmetic uh, problem to the patients. So clinical staging of lymphedema will be the first stage where stage 0 you won't have any signs and symptoms of clinical uh, lymphedema. In stage 1 you will have pitting pillar edema but this pitting pillar edema will be uh, gone when the patient is asked to raise or uh, lift their legs. In stage 2 there will be pitting pillar edema and this doesn't uh, reduce with uh, lymph, limb elevation. In stage 3 there is established lymphedema, uh, established elephantiasis with warty growths of the skin, acanthosis and uh, the patients can have uh, a non pitting viral edema. This is the uh, staging. This is the staging. So, what are the diagnostic testing? Uh, the patient, any patient with lymphedema, should be first evaluated with an ultrasound abdomen or a CT abdomen for identifying any malignancies, secondary malignancy causing lymphedema. Once that has been ruled out, you can go for the MRI of the uh, affected limb. The MRI of the affected limb will show the characteristic honeycombing appearance in the epifacial compartment. This honeycombing appearance and also it will show enlarged lymphatic vessels and the presence of lymph nodes. So three MRI findings, honeycombing appearance in the epifacial compartment, the enlarged lymphatic vessels or the enlarged lymph nodes if present, these are the classical findings. And the MRI can also identify conditions like Meitner syndrome and they can also be picked up with the MRI. So uh, what are the other investigations, uh, lymphangiocentigraphy. This is the, now the most preferred treatment imaging modality because the lymphangiocentigraphy involves an injection of a technetium dye into the distal part of the affected limb and this is followed by taking uh, photographs with a uh, uh, centigraphic camera. Uh, this will identify the flow of uh, the lymphatics uh, or uh, flow of lymphatics. In primary lymphedema, we will find there is absence, absence of lymphatics or there is reversal of uh, flow into the dermis. Uh, these are the two findings that can be seen in a primary lymphedema. In the secondary lymphedema, we can identify an obstruction uh, with the dilatation of the lymphatics. Uh, this is the secondary lymphedema picture. The same picture can be seen in also an, uh, a, a contrast uh, uh, lymphangiography where there is injection of a contrast in the distal extremities. Again, in the secondary, there will be obstruction and dilatation of the lymphatic vessels. In primary, there will be absence of lymphatic vessels. So, you know, this is how you diagnose the uh, lymphedema. So, how do you manage lymphedema? The management is predominantly conservative management. The patient's lower limb, uh, should, the patient should have uh, meticulous skin care as well as for, for the feet as well as for their legs. They should, if there is a dry skin, they should apply emollients to the skin. Uh, if the patient is having uh, any skin infection or bacterial fungal infection, it should be uh, aggressively managed. The patient uh, can try limb elevation, periodic limb elevation can be tried and mainly the physical therapy. The physical therapy in the case of uh, massaging the limbs, this can reduce the edema to some extent uh, and this can be used along with a gradual compression stockings uh, or can be tried along with the liposuction of the limbs if it is cosmetic significance. Now, but uh, the treatment of choice predominantly will be a microsurgical correction of the uh, lymphatics into the venous veins into the veins uh, you have to this treatment as uh, is uh, is a curative in lymphedema and it is effective if it is done early and the, recently there are a lot of gene therapies which have been developed for uh, this uh, lymph angiogenesis but they are in uh, developing trail so summary any female patient or may uh, presenting with an uh, painless swelling uh, with the pitting period edema for a long duration of uh, time uh, with uh, later developing some uh, uh, pitting period edema with a positive stemmer sign. The stemmer sign means you are not able to pinch the base of the first toe and there will be uh, squaring of the toes because of the deposition of uh, fibro fatty tissues and uh, collagen and the tissue that will be squaring of toes. 
and any patient with these findings you have to subject them to for lymph angiosyntigraphy if there is absence of lymph at absence of lymph node or uh, backflow of uh, lymph you have to treat it with lymphatic microvascular surgery uh, they will be uh, joining the veins of the lymphatics thank you